Let's just make it really clear for people. <laughs> okay. wow. It's better now. So now, just in this, this is what's great about dry erase boards because you can go, hey, I don't want a door yeah, handle shaved, <laughs> right? Done. If we start with our B pillar, right? Yeah. And the B pillar, there's no rules. It can be, you know, you can do it East Coast style with double laid back, looking mm -hmm. cool. Uh, we could do a straight up tube, right, for, for our B pillar. Yeah. And I always like to start at the B because okay. you're not really going to have much play. You're going to want that behind the seat to be your seatbelt bar, et cetera, et cetera. You could also go this way with a B. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's really, we have no rules. So the traditional way would be, you know, doing a B pillar here. Okay. And then we got to make it a little bit taller. So uh, Walt can get in there, <laughs> you know, and then obviously you can do a flat roof and then, you know, start to get your windshield angle in there. Um, and then this is the part that's fairly critical for me is the shock mounting points. Remember we talked about maybe laying the shock over at an angle, right? Yeah. Because otherwise right now the shock's going to be, you know, back here. Right there. Right? So we don't, we don't want it back there because we want to make it work for us with some leverage ratios and leverages. So say we were to pull this in a 30 degree angle. 25 somewhere in that range just from uh, off the top of my head yeah that's a spring right just so we know and so we know at full bump this is kind of a ride height representation that we're going to end up with a first shock mount somewhere in here and, and possibly a second one if we've got a, a bypasser going on here vice versa it doesn't matter right it, it, the lengths will end up mattering in the end and yeah honestly i think the coilover would probably be in front of the bypass just for anybody out there in, in YouTube land that wants to criticize what we're doing here. So, <laughs> um, so my thought is coming more back here and cutting the frame back further. Yeah. Um, and then basically supporting that, uh, this new tube work straight, straightish tubes, one bend, um, and coming back into here, uh, in this area, obviously not through the shocks, but, and then, when this tube comes down, traditionally, you know, you have a bunch of different cage designs, right? You can yeah. have a family style, right? Yeah. Which is very that's popular. Very, that's very GP. Right. Very GP. That's 90% of them. Um, you can have um, a half style, right? Which yep. is very attractive. I like it. And mm -hmm. it would actually give you a point to come back and land in the general area of the where the shocks are trying to bend stuff up in, yeah. in that direction um you could have something more suited at a shorter angle which i like for for safety okay because now we have a nice triangle here right okay we're starting to make a compartment for you um wow yes that's that's, that's you okay as a smurf that's your smurfette yep. hat thank you okay <laughs> and uh you're in a race car, oh, so you're happy. Happy, <laughs> okay. okay. But, you know, this angle could be, you know, your seat angle could be actually behind this, right? Okay. Um, and then, so then we start talking about how we're tying into the rest of the cage, right? So if this is cage, this is cage. Cage, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, this is, these are important things. And we're coming down and we're tying into the frame rail, right? And this is coming all the way down. We're tying into the frame rail. That'll be a straight tube though. Um, and so this tube would land on a tube that we'd have going probably right at the bed rail height. Okay. okay? And then coming down to where we, we've cut the frame here. Okay. Into this node where we're starting this transition over here. Okay. This is a safe, safe way to go because it really starts to create a lot of structure and triangles. Right. Okay. So basically this becomes a triangle too. Right. Yeah. And then this becomes a triangle in the door bar area. Mm -hmm. And then this becomes a triangle tying back into the frame here, okay? And then when we start working our way back here, now we can go with a piece of tube all the way out where the spare tire is going to sit somewhere like this, right? Yeah, okay. I love your attention so, to detail. Well, it's important, you know, you gotta it have really the, the right notes in there. So then since we've created this point, we were intersecting our new frame chop, okay? Um, 
this this junction right here then we can start working our way this way uh, with tubes to support the shock mounts okay yeah and make things land in that general area yeah and then we can continue with our triangulation structure to the back okay so now we have these nice triangles um, all throughout the vehicle we can actually do another tube here if we want to add some more support to this tube yeah and we start working ourselves forward right so now we have this frame rail in here um, and in 4500 we need all this frame rail in fact it's frame rail to behind the seats is typically the rules yep but yeah you know it's got a nice shape already right there and it's not interfering so we don't need to reinvent the wheel so we keep moving forward with a structure that'll sit inside the, just under the hood and mm -hmm. eventually a nice little miter right there would be cool land down here onto your frame rail right and then we create that same structure that we've got where you're going to have a tube come up here land somewhere up here another one here that's going to come land somewhere there and again we're going to have somewhere in this vicinity shocks okay and the bypassers or vice versa again the lengths are going to dictate that that's basically how i see really abstract like there's i didn't put any measurements in here this is just what i see in my brain for how that may or may not work okay this is going to be our start so one other look is um, doing um, a more of a uh, this which is really similar but doing um, instead of doing that coming further back like we said yeah um, and then having your B pillar so uh, I kind of like this shorter look and it's a bit it's a smaller tighter triangle yeah all right for for keeping that gauge integrity so Hey my lovelies, welcome back to the channel. First of all, here are the results for the weld off that we had the other day. So if you liked number two or three, that was Chris was number two, three was Kevin, and you know the people who can really weld, so congratulations to you. We're here today, and today we are gonna be continuing on with the cage. We're actually gonna be concentrating on the rear end of everything. So we're gonna be cutting the rear cross member, the front cross member, and we're gonna be working on the back half of the frame. So we got tube to cut we'll be doing that i'm gonna head over i'm actually gonna be bending tube today i'm gonna learn how to use the bailey machine and then we'll bring it back we'll cope everything we'll start fitting things see how they look see how we feel because there's always options right when you're building a cage even although there are specifications we can still get a little creative here and there as long as everything is up to spec which everything is so enough talking it's time to work I'm actually bending tube today, which is super cool with this uh, Bailey bender and it's all touch screen. Press the angle. I put in 90 degrees there. The spring back for this material is 9.5 and that's actually what we did on the first day is CCK here did like an S bend that I'll show you just to get the spring back. So everything's setting there and we bent the first bend. We did. We did. We Super did. exciting. And since we don't have fancy software with us like Bentech to tell us how to linearly bend this, starting from one side and going through, we're bending from the center out, which means that we need to just transfer our our bend line, our bend start line, from the other side to the other side of the tube. We'll flip it over and bend another one. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada boom. We're just discussing what we're going to do on the back here and there's a couple of things that we can do but we're discussing through them right now original idea yep. was to 
continue this tube here straight back. Yep. Make a 90 degree here, basically following the body line. Yep. And then it was going to Come kick down. down and back a little bit and into the back of the frame. Yep. We need to put a cross member in the frame anyways yep. under the body. Yeah. So we could also do straight back 90 somewhere in here and it can either come out and go straight, straight down to down. that or it could come 90 and then kind of angle down in at whatever this is to the cross member 20 degrees or so i like it too okay so i'm going to quickly finish the cross member that i'm working on right now and then we're going to head on to the rear and work on there but i'm liking where this is going what do you think Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna sit in the vehicle in the seat. We're gonna cut the stock pedal assembly to exactly what we need. I'm gonna get my steering wheel and we are going to figure out where we're gonna put that shoulder or harness bar and just get us situated perfectly so that we know where the seat's gonna sit what we have to do with that bar. We're trying not to do a kickback. I have a feeling we might have to just because of the position I like to sit in. I do drive pretty close in uh, Mischief Maker. Um, I'm not kind of one to lean back and be far away. I like to feel in control at all times. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Door stripers are still in this thing because doors need what? Is this a JK? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want doors for it? Yeah. I've been asking for the skins. I have M4O aluminum skin doors for this truck in my garage. Wait, do you really? I do, yeah. I bought Wait. them for a two door. Yeah. I didn't think about that. I think we just found our, skin, our door skins. Yeah. Yeah, they're the aluminum Steve Nance ones. Yeah. And I got the strikers for them. Oh. I did not even think about that. Oh. I'll, uh, I'll figure out how to get them to you. Okay. Problem solved on the door front. Yeah. Would you like a fox, a rigid, or a dirty life hat? I would like a fox hat. <gasps> well, I will get you a fox hat from Kevin because he was going to say that he was going to give a hat to the person who gave us the skins. And so. since we're in the house of Kevin and yeah. the house of Fox. All right, I'm sorry guys. Put it out there. No one came, but Chris yeah. has arrived and he has provided. So Chris, we'll get the hat. Take the steering wheel to 90 degrees. Uh, no, I'm sorry, 90 degrees turned. Oh. Don't move your hands. How comfortable is that? Is it a little past comfortable? It's a little so past comfortable. Is that more comfortable? Yeah. We can move the seat forward then. Yeah, let's move the All seat right. forward. Um, is that too close now? I think just yeah, a I can, little, I can yeah. see it's too close. So the theory let's behind, go, let me see the steering wheel. Let's go back one inch. Oh, you know what, not with these gloves on. They're full of shit. Okay. So the reason for that steering position is yeah. if you are too far away, when you go past 90, you start to lose your upper hand. Yeah. If you're too close, when you go past 90, you start to it's lose like, your fingers. Yeah. So in the middle, you should be able to keep your hands on the steering wheel from 90 to 90. Okay. And when you go past 90 in racing, you shuffle here, here, shuffle. go, here, here, go. Okay. Call them steering wheel boops. We're still gonna yeah. have to do the kick back in the bar. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, because, oh yeah, even in the other position, I forgot about the lean back. Yeah. All right, now. If the wheel is here and, the, and there's a lean back, is that too far away or that's fine? Uh, it's probably a little bit too far away. 
All right, so because the guys have been working so super freaking hard, I am going out and grabbing everyone lunch. Today we're doing DQ. So heading on over there, we're gonna grab that, take it back to them, have a quick lunch break and get back to it. We're making moves today. We are making moves. Do you have to do that every time? Yeah, every time. Why, why is that? to show the customers, even though it's soft serve, it's still good quality of ice cream. Oh, well thank you. Have a great day. I had to ask the question why they put it upside down all the time. I have never understood, but it's kind of a good reason. I guess that's just what they do. That's that's what they're known for. So we're going to head on back. We're going to eat some lunch, take a little break, and then um, I'm going to tell you exactly what we're going to get up to this afternoon. DQ was amazing, we needed that break, but it's back to work. And we're revisiting the rear end where we started this morning. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take um, a tube and we're gonna bend it at a 90 degree angle. And this is essentially what we're thinking of doing. We're gonna make this 90 degree bend and then have it come straight down to the cross member in the rear, like you saw. So we're gonna cut it, we're gonna bend it, and we're gonna go see how it looks. That enough to cope it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Even oh, yeah. uh, raise up it up higher. to the yeah. level of the to the other bar. Down. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It should have been uh, twenty. What? We need a little Kevin. I can do that. You Kevin? I'd run it. Where's Kevin? I'd just go ahead and bend it. Huh? Kevin? Wow. Uh -huh. Kevin? Kevin? Kevin! We need to shorten this guy up. And this needs to move as far forward as possible, and here's why. This is the, we're gonna call this the back of your fuel cell, somewhere in here. Okay. And we've already figured out that to put a 37 up to, even to the there. Yep, it's, it's like be way out here. Off. So it needs to go to an angle. Yes. So this height over the floor, which is call it 17 and a half inches. Yeah. You need the top edge of your tire going this way. So this should be landing just behind so, the fuel cell. As, as, as far as we can go forward with it. With yeah. the cross member. Yep. Um, I did not think about how wide a 37 is. Yeah and it will it'll never fit in between these unless we run them and we go straight straight down, down. yeah which yeah. we don't want to do no. no so no because we have to come down and hit an outrigger here and that's yeah. annoying so we're not going with the first idea that didn't work because of the tire placement the second idea that we just talked about no we didn't like that one either so we're going with the third and final design and here are the reasons why we're going with this. There's more rigidity this way, the tire sits lower, which means I can see better out of the rear, and there's just gonna be more real estate for tools. The thing which it's gonna be tank. really, really strong. And then yeah, we can, we can run one right down to here. Be kind of cool. Yeah. And then the same thing over here. Yeah. And what we'll do is We'll make them a little bit wider than a 37. That would be perfect. So that if you happen to go to 40s for the trail at some point, there's room for a 40 back here. No. Yeah, there you go. Okay. When I buy this car from you and put it on 40s. <laughs> and then what we can do is we can build a thing here that keeps the spare tire from hitting the fuel cell. So it just lays in there. Yeah, I like it. All right, now we just gotta build one more. We're gonna make a 90 degree bend in this. And she really die. does have most of the details. So I'll talk you through this. It is a six inch uh, center line radius. Oh, six inch center line radius, two inch die. Correct. So if it's six inches on center and we want the end of our tube to the center line of our 90, to be 
18 inches, we need to start that bend six inches before. So yeah. 18 minus six is? 12. 12. <laughs> All right, you got the tape measure, right? I do, yes. All right, so you're gonna go 12 inches from this side because it bends that way. Awesome. So 12 I'll inches. I'll hold this end. It's way back there. Oh, wait. Oh, we're all the way there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Let's pull Slide it back in, through, pull get it, it pretty close. There this we go. tube needed to be 47, but it is actually 50 or so, which means we have some fudge factor. Yeah. And we're going to fudge it to the side that we have to cut so that you can always cut more off. So Chris so. has been really awesome with me because when it comes to calculating things, not the quick, I can do it. I'm just not the quickest of people and we're on a bit of a time crunch. So you've been fantastic. All right, so we have been looking obviously at what we've built so far and um, with the fuel cell in there and we're gonna need a friend's help, that friend being Rudy. So let's give him a call and see if by chance he will help us in this situation. <laughs> Well, hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Holly? I'm good. I'm good. I have a question for you. Oh, well, ask away. Well, um, I'm, you, I don't know if you know, but I'm building a race vehicle. I got the idea. Okay. Okay. Cool. Oh, well, thanks. Okay. Well, um, we're, we know where the fuel tank is going to go in and we need something for it to mount into. So if I send you some pictures and maybe bring you the fuel cell tomorrow, would you be able to come up with a solution for me? Um, well, I can't guarantee a solution, but I can definitely take a look at it. Well, that would be super helpful and awesome. Awesome. Yeah, we'll bring it by tomorrow and we'll, we'll see what we can do. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem, Holly. All right. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay. Guess I'm going to be taking that tomorrow. Hoping he has a solution. <laughs> So there you have it. We have the foundation for a great cage here. Uh, tomorrow we're working on the rear suspension and we're going to start on that engine bay. Guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you tomorrow.